Well, this is a surprise. The nice kind? Get out, legions. I want to go to bed. Maybe in a few years. How about now? I prefer the real Rogal Dawn. I said the real Rogal Dawn. I said the real Rogal Dawn. Perfection. Oh, we're live. Greetings, Legionnaires. It's been quite a while, but we're back now. And this time we're looking forward to revealing the Imperial Fists. The first Legion of the, well, the last Legion of all the Legions to be revealed, of course. And the first faction of the new expansion coming out this Friday. We've got a lot to talk about here, but I don't have a lot of time to do this. So let's jump into it from the beginning and see what we've got. First up, let's take a trip down memory lane and look at one of the very first cards revealed, the Garadon Tactical Squad. Revealed on the very first day, this bloke is a 2-2 two, two for 2 with Bastion 2. That's a lot of 2s. Um, well, what exactly is Bastion? Bastion is a perfect chance for me to recycle this meme. Bastion is an extra health pool luck survivor, but not nearly as good. If you take damage from any source apart from combat damage received when you are attacking with this troop, the Bastion will be reduced first. So if this guy takes two damage on the defense or two damage from a tactic or two damage from a ping of some sort, board damage, anything, he'll take two damage from Bastion first and then start eating into his health but it will overflow. It's not like Survivor where you'll get a second chance to live, no. Uh, if this guy takes four damage, he's just straight up dead. If he takes three, he's left on one, one HP. So, that's Bastion. It's, a, it's an extra health pool, but not if you attack with it, forcing you to play very reactively. I mean, almost any troop will kill this guy if he attacks into him. So, that in the, in the gates, he's... he's um, his Bastion bonus and a 2-2 two, two with no other, but 2-2, 4-2 two, two, two energy with no other extra benefit is unplayable. You can't play that against all the 2-3 the two, for 2s or the 3 twos for you know, it's, It can't be done. It won't even kill Jubak. Jubak himself will laugh at the thing. So why would you play this? And to be, to be honest, you probably wouldn't. It's probably no card you include in your deck. And thanks to my first reveal, you don't have to. This is Alexis Pollux. Alexis Pollux is the rare warlord for the Imperial Fists, and uh, obviously 2 attack, 30 HP, as all rare warlords do have, but his ability put in play a Garadon squad for 2 energy. So we see a lot of these kind of warlords. Um, the warlord who puts in basically the basic infantry unit for their faction. Well, a starter's unit. Just like, um, reminds me of um, uh, Zahariel, who just came out for uh, Defenders of Caliban, who puts in play the basic a starter's unit for the Defenders. And he's fairly playable, admittedly. Initiative low on Alexis, uh, that's gonna hurt. And yeah, no one particularly likes the low initiative, um, yeah, warlords. Well, to me, the low initiative on such an not obviously powerful warlord indicates to me that maybe it's even an advantage to try and get the counterattack. That's my first thought here. I mean, he's, there's nothing about him that's like, whoa, you know, um, 
generating a troop. That's the, something we've never seen before. It's so strong. Better give him low initiative to balance him. No, maybe it's to make it an advantage of sorts. Eh, I don't know. Maybe I'm being optimistic. Maybe I'm just trying to read too much into this. Maybe he will not be playable at all because low initiative and low health is not a good combination either, by the way. But, it's, it bears thinking about. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not writing him off just yet. In fact, I still, as I said, think he might be playable. Now, what's the point of all this Bastion and stuff? I mean, we've so far seen they've got a lot of Bastion troops, they've got a lot of ways to put multiple troops in with a single card, or copy troops, or uh, play several defensive structures even. But what's the point? We've seen a little bit of this so far, but if you're going to have such an unreactive playstyle, which basically involves sitting there and not attacking, What's the point of even having a troop on the table? Because if you're going to lose your Bastion by attacking, you need it there for some reason, right? And that's got to be some kind of payoff for it. We've seen a few of these so far. Um, we saw a troop that gets plus one for every single troop you already have in play. We've seen some that are, okay, they're, they're outflank effect. It gets cheaper for every troop you have in play. So there's some kind of payoff cards there already and I'm gonna show another one which is very bad let's be honest straight up here this is void maneuver and yeah uh, for four energy stun one random enemy for every troop you control okay for starters random not great for energy for well Technically, you could be stunning up to six, but you know what else can do that? There's a card called uh, Silent Death. Three energy and stuns any undamaged enemies, which, yes, sometimes that will not hit many, but you will usually hit the the big beaters that just came down that you need to take an extra turn to take, to take care of. Yeah, um, it's usually going to get them, right? So you can usually rely on a target for it not to mention other great stuns like uh, the lambda thunderhawk which for a single energy more will hit th three targets that you choose basically and also deal four damage for a single point of energy more than this yeah that's but and let's look at the fact that if you have no troops on the board this is just a blank piece of cardboard it says nothing it, you would play it and nothing would happen. It doesn't even stun one for your Warlord. I mean, I even think they might have made a mistake and they meant to port for every unit. Maybe. Because, yeah. I mean, I know you don't want to... Stun's very powerful, of course, and you don't want to overdo it. But... Well, maybe this is implying it's going to be very easy for... for Imperial Fist to keep troops to the stuck to the board, but unless they find it, unless Imperial Fist troops are stickier than a very sticky stick, this is probably not a very good card at all. The randomness makes it too unreliable, the reliance on your own troops, again unreliable, you don't want to top deck this when you're trying to scratch at a win. But I also have a legendary card to show you, and now we're talking, because this bloke is what we would call a payoff for keeping troops stuck to the board. Here we have the legendary Justicy, just, just, oh, Justicky, there's your sticky, Justicky Gunfried, that's what we're going with. It's a 6-8, 8, eight energy dreadnought which we see a lot of in many factions and here we finally have a good power for the keeping a wide board in the form of rally deal three damage to a random enemy for every other unit you control which will of course include your warlord and that means it's never completely dead it's always going to deal three damage when it at least three damage when it enters uh, 
to clarify, of course, this effect is multiplied into several attacks. So that means it does not. It well, it means that it will repeat and copy the effect for every other unit you control. So let's say you have four units. It'll do three, then three, then three, and each time choosing a random target, which is much more effective, of course, than just doing a giant blob of damage to a single target. And also means it won't be. It can it can hit the warlord multiple times. Let's say you're facing Kurz or Angron, and well. In fact, the developer I spoke to who gave me this card seems uh, seemed very happy to point out that it punishes Kurz in particular. So maybe the dev team have a few uh, anti Night Lord supporters on there. Um, but yes, yes, yeah, any lone warlord sitting there by themselves. I mean, it's not random if they're not if they're the only thing on the board. They're taking uh, you know X times three damage. So yeah, um, like it's a decent body to start off with, and the fact that it's coming in with a rally ability, hey, it mean it gives you a payoff for building up a board and just having those troops that are going to sit around with Bastion and not attacking. It it could uh, looking at some of the other reveals we've seen, I can see it quite possible you might be able to put this guy down and just machine gun away the opponent's board or deal a huge chunk to their face or something. Looking forward to it, in fact. Anyhow, that's my favourite reveal of the the set. Well, there wasn't a lot of competition. I mean, kind of mediocre Warlord, though generating tokens again is very powerful. Um, the Technic, yeah, not a fan of. Um, I, I really hope they've misprinted that and it should have said unit. We might see that even change before the set release. We'll see. But yeah, there we have it. Um, as I said, not a lot of time for this one. So just going to leave it to you guys to enjoy the spoilers, compare the others, look at all the synergies. Uh, I could talk about it longer, but I'm sure you can figure it out for yourselves. I'll be around in the Discord to chat about it or chat in my comment section here. And until then, get hyped until Friday. I mean, I'm really liking the look of them. It's looking to be very different, very different from how other factions play them. I mean, the fact, even even Defenders of Caliban, they, they really tried to do a go wide faction. But even then, they're looking to be active and be on the attack. Whereas here with the, uh, the Imperial Fist, you put down your troop and you forget about it basically until you put your payoff later. We'll see how it works out. It's going to be a very different way of play and hopefully they hit the balance just right. That said, I'll catch you all on Friday my friends. Have a great one.